Hello, we are Serenity Book Club, and we're glad that you are with us today. Uh, I have with me today, I have Miss Estella and I have Miss Carolyn, and we are here to join you today as we go through uh, this wonderful book. It's called Destiny, Step Into Your Purpose by T.D. Jakes. And those of you who've been following along with us, we are on chapter 11, Learn from the Destiny of Others. And so it's a really good uh, shaking as it relates to mentorship. So I hope that we'll have a great discussion today. We welcome you and hello, Miss Vivian. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad to see you. And hello, woman of God, we're glad to see you as well. Thank you for joining us today. So let's go on and get started. We don't wanna ever get started without a word of prayer. So um, I'm just gonna go on and lead us in a word of prayer uh, at this moment. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for uh, this day. Thank you, God, for just the opportunity for us to discuss uh, good information and things that will help us to reach our destiny and, Father, our purposes in you. We adore you. We magnify you, God. Your name is to be worthy of praise, honor, and glory. God, we just want to give you honor that you so richly deserve. And Father God, we thank you for every moment, God, that we are able to commit our lives to you so that your purpose can be fulfilled in us. Do what only you can do in this moment and in this discussion. Let it be encouragement to your people, God, as we all discuss how we can get to the place that you have ordained for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you guys so much uh, for being with us today. Um, and we appreciate how God is going to do a greater work in all of us. So uh, those of you who are, are, are chiming in from Facebook, we're glad to have you. Hello, Mrs. Stella. And hello. Yes, you're just checking in for a few. Well, we love you. We thank you for stopping by for the moment. And uh, we appreciate whatever input that you have at the time. So we are in this chapter, and this is the chapter that is focusing on us learning how to learn from the destiny of others, which I guess I thought that it was going to have a different focus, but it talks about stepping into greater exposure. And so um, when I looked at that, I looked at the first page of this chapter, which it begins on 161, and it says, God is the great strategist who will call and lead you to destiny, but it's, cru it's critical to have at least one human being who can guide you in the quest, listening to a wise mentor and learning from the experiences of others in pursuit of destiny can boost you past mistakes you may make while trying to do everything on your own. And he speaks to the issue of people who are usually on their own and how they, you know, function in that, you know, kind of that lone wolf kind of response. But most of us need community and most of us need the opportunity to talk to other people who will give us the insight that we need. So let's go on and talk a little bit about that today, guys, as we go through this process. Uh, and I believe that God is going to do something great. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, amen. Amen. I'm glad you got your word. So, uh, And so I'm going to go on and bring on Glenda and Miss Erlene as well, who's joining us today. Thank you guys. Good morning. Good, Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. Yes, absolutely. So let's go on and uh, talk a little bit about this. In terms of having someone to steer us along the way, what are your thoughts, guys, with that? When you all looked at that particular page, what were some of the first things that came across your mind, guys? And okay. anyone can start. We are on the we are on, yeah we are on page one sixty one. I oh. I I just thought that I saw the importance of it, the value of it, because it's like anything. If you try to do it, I'm sorry. If you try to do it alone, it's so much harder. But if mm -hmm. you can get somebody, especially somebody who's been through that situation you've been through, 
it's just more powerful. It's it's more of a learning time. It's more, you know, it just feeds you in more. I watch so many things. Like, uh, like as you know, I love being out in the yard. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I seek the knowledge of being out there from other people oftentimes. If I run into something and I don't know, and I see somebody who's doing it well, I'll pull them, you know, a neighbor or somebody. And how you do the can you? You don't have to do it for me. I just need you to tell me. And once they tell me, that process is so much easier. And it's even easier when they come actually come in with me and they help both of us get whatever's done done. It's, it's so it make it easier for you. It's an easier process for you to get to where you where you are to where you want to go. So that's the same thing for everywhere in our life. If we have somebody to walk with us, it makes it so much easier. Yeah, walking alongside of someone else who's been through the journey is often helpful because, you know, it's like if you've ever been on the highway and someone tells you, hey, when you get to Harlem Avenue on 290, there's going to be a big old pothole on the right hand side. And so they know it because they already blew out a tire. And so it's no need of us blowing out a tire, too. Um, by going that same route, we need to make sure that we move over into the lanes that are more advantageous for us. And I think that one of the things that we get from that is we get the opportunity uh, to hear from someone else. Um, Ms. Adams says, she says, I am the lone wolf and I'm the first in my generation to intentionally seek a relationship with God. And I find myself being the only one or the first in terms of sticking and staying on the journey. Yeah, and it feels a little lonely in that destiny, I would imagine. Um, I was um, I was the first one saved in my household as well. And it makes a difference because, you know, our, our family, they went to church. We went to church. But, you know, that relationship with God was something that we all had to learn and to form into. And so I can imagine that it's lonely. But hopefully, uh, just as the author is saying, you've connected with some people throughout your life that has been able to help you to uh, intentionally seek that relationship too. And I pray that if you don't have that, uh, you know, as you continue in this beautiful journey of yours, that you will continue to walk alongside someone who, you know, is maybe in a different level of where you want to go and, and connect with them because that's so important. Uh, she says the right relationship and not just church descendants. Yes, absolutely. And it makes a difference. It really does. So guys, um, when you all talk about this and you all look at that, he goes on and goes on at the bottom of page 161. He says, no one is perfect. No one has a perfect journey to destiny. He says, and talking with a mentor who has experienced similar trials can help you realize there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, everyone has setbacks, makes dumb decisions, and hits some hard bumps while trying to succeed. What you're going through is the dues you pay to take the ride. What were your thoughts on that? Was that a little bit... Uh, troubling to anybody or anyone want to make a comment and uh, feel free to unmute your mic when you want to talk about that, guys. Reverend Yvette, I was going to yeah. say that was encouraging to me um, because I, I, I sort of think that everything is supposed to be perfect. And I mm -hmm. like talking to, um, uh, how can I say it, uh, uh, seasoned seniors you know, like the mothers of the church that um, have have walked this walk. And, and a lot of times they've counseled me and it's been so encouraging. And I've learned too that nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes on this journey. So that was encouraging to me. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It was encouraging to me as well. Uh -huh. because, uh, I always uh, tell the young people, I have already got my head split open. You don't have to get yours, you know, <laughs> because I, you know, I try to encourage them now, you know, but it was encouraged to me to know that I'm all right, you know, because, 
a lot of times I went and did the same thing over and over again too. So, and it, yeah, that makes a difference. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so I think here, um, she says, uh, yes, I do. And we'll continue to do that. Salem has been very instrumental in regards to my relationship with other Christians affiliated with other churches too. And yes, I, I agree with that. Sometimes there are people even outside of your current church body who can be an influence and can make a difference in your life. So, you know, we have to go wherever God is leading us, regardless of where our church membership is, because some of the best mentors that you'll find sometimes may not be in your specific church, uh, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to leave your church in order for you to have a relationship with someone else. And so I, I really suggest that, Whoever it is that God is leading us to, it will be the right fit, no matter where they are. So that's good. Thank you for sharing. Um, anyone else before we move a little bit further into this particular chapter? I don't want to miss your insight or your wisdom. I agree with uh, the other ladies. It's it's truly show you, it's encourage you and show you that you're not alone because you learn that they had failures, that they had stumbling block, that they had obstacle that they had to overcome the same way that you are. Because often we look at whatever situation we in as if it's only pertaining to us. Don't nobody else go through the struggle but me. So if I sit in my house all day and I think that by myself, I'm not going to get anywhere. But if I get me a mentor or somebody who's been through the same storm I, I'm going through, they're going to encourage me or show me some of the ways to, you know, help smooth it out. That Just knowing that they made it through, give me the courage to try to make it through. That's good. Anyone else? Because one of the things that we see in scripture is that there are a lot of mentors in the New Testament. Uh you know, at a point, Barnabas was a mentor to Barnabas and Ananias was a mentor to Paul. And then you see that Paul is a mentor to John Mark and to Silas. Then you see how Peter, you know, is a, is a uh, mentor to those who came alongside of him, like Luke. And, you know, there are people who consistently have mentorship. You see that Priscilla and Aquila actually takes Apollos under their wings and teaches him what he needs to know in terms of doctrine. It is not something unusual to have a mentor relationship. I love what he says here on page 162. This is right on the second paragraph, guys. He says, once you align with God and agree to take the ride, God begins putting things in motion. When a student is ready for guidance, the teacher will appear. When you're positioned toward destiny, the mentor you need will appear. But you must be looking and you must be open to instruction. I think that's the key, guys. Guidance and wise counsel. When you say yes to destiny, introductions will be made that you can't explain and you will develop associations that money could not buy. What were your thoughts regarding that when you all read that? Anybody can jump in. And make sure that you unmute your mics when you want to talk. Yes, Glenda. Associations that money can't buy. Can I? That is a good thing. That's a good thing because, yeah, I would like to have a relationship with the Obamas because I'm sure they can school me in, a, in many things and point me in the right direction. Or, you know, with Bill Gates and those guys, yeah, I'd like to have an associate. I wouldn't want the money. You know, I'd just like to have some of the con connections, the advice, you know, point me in the right direction. Oh, yeah, I agree. That's priceless. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Did you want to say me something, Miss Erling? Uh, you can unmute Mike, and if you can't, I'll unmute it for you. I, I, I was very impressed with that because it seems like, you know, I asked a lady once if she would uh, be my mentor, and she told me that 
I was old already, and I, you know, and I thought, well, sometimes young people can mentor older people, but, but uh, now it seems like everything is fitting in place, you know. So I, I'm, re I was really impressed with that statement. Well, you know what? We, he actually talks about that a little later in this chapter. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that very soon. So thank you for, so much for sharing uh, your heart about that. One of the things that he also goes on and talks about, you know, he talks about the successful mentor, but then he talks about the bootstrap people. And I think that's where, uh, where Ms. Adams was talking about. Mentors can't help some people. It says, uh, you heard the stories of people who claim no one helped me. I made it all on my own. The bootstrap people who have made great strides often are not good candidates for mentorship because they are a nature by nature independent. And so usually those people, uh, you're going to find people who they are just not you know, designed to be a mentor to anyone. They think um, for themselves, they have to do whatever they do on their own and they don't have the time, the energy, the mindset to mentor anyone. And don't be upset because someone has chosen not to mentor you. Listen to God so that God can tell you, who is the other person, you know, because sometimes I think we we scan around and we say, oh, that's the person I want to mentor me. And, and sometimes we don't listen and say, God, who is it that you want me to connect with? Because usually when we hear him say that, usually he makes that door open. Uh, she says, yes, and I and all of you continue to line up for me in order, ready to offer a word, words of wisdom, truth, and encouragement as a correction and redirection when and where it's needed to, truly a blessing. Yes, I think that that's what the body of Christ has to be about, is that we have to learn from one another. And everyone that I meet, I learn a little bit different from them as well. Uh, sometimes uh, my son says, I don't listen to him, but I do listen to him. He doesn't think that I do, but I learn so much wisdom and clarity and understanding from him sometimes. And then when we pray, it does make a difference. We pray and wait. It makes a difference to find that mentor that's right for you. So, um, so anybody else thoughts regarding that and, and mentorship here as he's talking about the bootstrap people? Did anybody else pick up anything before we turn to page 164? I think we just have to realize those people when we come on them, that God didn't send them to them. And a person who have always done it on their own, they believe that you should do it on their own. So they're not even able to help you. Not only are they not willing, they're not able because they don't understand that it's take a community or take a village to get through whatever we're going through. So we have to realize that bootstrap people are not. So you're right. When they said no, just keep going and say that, God, you have another door for me. Yeah, I think some gifted people, they just don't know how to explain where they got, how they got to where they got to. They 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 can't really share because it was all so organic and maybe they didn't write it down. Maybe they didn't jot it down. They were just in the moment. And, uh, you know, I remember talking to a friend once who was a pastor who said, you know, my people want me to give feedback to them when they preach. Uh but he's like, I, I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> you know, he's like, I can't mentor them, you know, because he wasn't mentored. And so I think that it makes a difference when you don't know what to say. That's probably not the good mentor for you. You want to find someone who not only made it, but also knows how to instruct. And there's some people who are just not going to be in that place. On page 164, right there in the middle, guys, he says, reading and research are important tools to equip you with knowledge, but mentoring has the added benefit of stocking your decisions with wisdom that someone else has paid for. What are your thoughts regarding that, guys? 
And those of you on Facebook, you can join in as well. I, I think it's saying that, um, you know, you can have book knowledge, but a mentor who's gone through it and has made the mistakes or made the victories can share. And, and I think it's, it's, it's more when you have somebody that has experienced that, you know, or maybe not per se some things, but they have the wisdom from God to uh, share that you won't fall. Like you said, there's a hole in the road down there. So you can uh, go around it, you know, and not fall in it. Miss mm -hmm. Erling? I also agree because, um, you know, um, you might have the knowledge and everything, but um, when you have the when you have the hands on, when you've gone through something, you know, I know I used to mentor in, in nursing. So I used to, uh, the young people, you know, they had somebody to come to and they, they respect, uh, you know, your, your years of knowledge. Most of them did. So, uh, then they could, they could, uh, go around that or didn't have to get in, you know, I had when I first became a nurse, I had a, a mentor, and uh, I right away I I went and did the wrong thing, and so you don't go to the blood bank and come back and hang the blood. You have to get it checked and all that. So, but she covered me, and I never did that ever again. But you know, it's it's uh, it's good when you have somebody who mentor you and who has yeah. gone through it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, people don't want you to make their mistakes. And so that's a good thing, even though, as he said earlier, we're going to make some mistakes, but a mentor does help us to look at some things. Uh, he goes on in this next paragraph uh, by talking about the four step approach to teacher learning relationship. First, watch me do it. Second, do it with me. Third, I'll do it with you. And then fourth, I'll watch you do it. What are some of your thoughts regarding that, guys? And uh, before we do that, I have a, a, a comment from Miss Vivian because we always want to hear what she has to say. She says when she was working, uh, she was assigned to one job, but her, in her spare time, she would ask how she could do other jobs. When I retired, I knew I could do any job. That's awesome. Yeah, asking people to you know, to teach you something else, uh, to learn something else. That's like amazing. Thank you, Ms. Vivian. So what were your thoughts, guys, regarding this four-step approach? Anyone? And unmute your mics before you start talking so we can make sure that we hear you. No thoughts regarding that, guys? Uh, Reverend Yvette, I was going to yeah. say, I think I learned like that, like that step, what, what he was saying, the first step, watch me do it, and then we'll do it together, you know, and um, and then he'll do it with, you know, in other words, I'm a visual person, and I like it when a, a mentor can show me visually or even give me examples that I can visualize. I think I learned better like that. So I like that. I like that four step uh, that he had. Four step approach. Now, one of my medical exactly. friends told me once before that in medical school, they go with a three step approach that you see one, you do one, and you teach one. And so it's almost very similar when you have a mentor who's going to walk along the side of the way to make sure that you don't fall in those crevices. And thank God for mentors because they're the ones who will help us to ask the right questions, to ask the hard questions of our lives uh, as we go along the way. Anyone else want to share before we go further? I agree with Ms. Estella. Having somebody walk you with you through your process is so much easier. I'm a visual person also. I remember when I used to teach at the YMCA, I taught all type of arts and crafts, macrame and knitting and crocheting and so forth and so on. 
And I had a young lady there because I had never taught in that setting before. So even though I had taught, it, it's, it's a completely different setting with the, the kids from the YMCA and the after school program. And she walked with me to show me how to do that. It was a different type of lesson plan. It was a different type of everything. So I had to learn it. And without her, I don't know if I would have been there long. <laughs> but thank God for her. She, she helped walk me through and she you know, gave me the space also to grow and to do it myself. So it works. That's awesome. Anyone else? I think Miss Arlene is trying to talk. Let me unmute your mic. There you uh, go. Sweet. I think it's the safest way as well, because mm -hmm. uh, especially in, in medicine, you know, you want to make sure. I don't want nobody coming doing something that they never did before. You know, you have to get practice or, or something. <laughs> you need somebody that, uh, you know, and then you, you won't have them say, I wasn't taught that, you know, so. You well, you have to be sure you you know they know before they get at the bedside. Absolutely, thank you for so much for sharing. Um, those of you on Facebook, always feel free to chime in. We love your comments. We love to put them up so that we can discuss that further. He goes into the next few pages talking about mentoring begins where education ends, and he talks about the challenge of you know of course we need the education, we need the knowledge, we need the information that's helping us to prepare. Uh, some of the things that we're wanting to do, things that God is telling us to do, is going to require some education. It's going to require us to do some schooling. Sometimes it's going to require us to do some webinars, some workshops, some you know learning from other people, but it never takes the place of a good mentor in our lives. And so on page 167, he says, do you need a mentor? And he goes on by saying that, uh, how do you know whether or not you need a mentor when all that is within you hasn't produced the expected outcomes, you need to enhance what you know with whom you know. What are your thoughts regarding that? Do you think that when you realize that you're not you're not advancing any further, <laughs> that it's time to ask somebody else? Anybody can jump in. It is. It is. Unfortunately, your education won't take you to the next level you need to get to. Book sense you need. But book sense is kind of, for me, since I'm a visual person, it's only on paper. But if you would allow me to actually experience it and work with it and do it a little more, I'm going to become that much better at it. So, yeah, I agree that you need the education so you can know the basic and what to do. But you need the mentor to help you walk you through it and to help show you how it should be done correctly. Yeah, yeah, I think that that is true as well. Anyone else want to share before we go a little bit further or anything that I might have skipped over that you thought was specifically impactful uh, before we go further? Mm -hmm. Well, then let's go to 168. He says, destiny requires a commitment to lifelong learning. No matter how much you think, you know, always be willing to take another step of growth to your destiny. Mm. Um, one of the things that I know that oftentimes people do is that they find themselves uh, thinking, okay, well, I know all about this. And so I don't really need to, uh, to grow in this area. And then we find ourselves stifled or stuck in a place because we're unwilling. We're unwilling to learn new technology. We're unwilling to, to read new things. We're unwilling to stretch out. And then we we'll, we'll make the excuse, I'm too old. I'm, I don't have enough knowledge. I don't have enough wisdom. You know, all of those things that we make those excuses for, you know, it's going to cost me too much money. It's good. But these are investments in yourself to have this lifelong learning. But then he says, if you add someone to your life who is smarter, more knowledgeable or accomplished than you, 
and making and make learning from that person experience part of your destiny, a mentor will push you to grow, help you to move into a larger arena and gain new exposure and expand your knowledge. Mm, what are your thoughts mm, regarding mm, that? Miss mm. Carolyn, <laughs> I hear you. What do you say? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it <laughs> What do you say? I, I truly agree. I truly agree. Is uh he was talking about it was one thing i don't forget what page that was on but it is you have to almost have somebody walk whatever that is with you so if they could walk that path and not even that you know they, they're doing the work for you doing your own work because you won't grow if you don't but you looking at them from far and near you're watching them, how they do it, especially if they're a successful person. Like uh, Miss Glenda said, if I was around Michelle Obama or, or Barack Obama, <laughs> President Barack, I would definitely, you know, just watch because I admire the way they handle themselves, they carry themselves. And I know they have faults also. But for the success part, I would model myself more after who they are and how they have done things, how they speak, how they walk, how they and you could do it for far and near without them being directly connected to you, I do believe. Because I could watch a person and I'll say, oh, I love the way they, I would never do it because I have a speech impediment, but I love the way they pronunciate. So mm -hmm. I would work to, you know, improve my speech impediment a little bit more by trying to speak a little better, by trying to, Maybe the way they, they dress or whatever, by trying to do it a little better like they do. And you could do it from near and far to me, but yeah, we need it. <laughs> and I think part of that is consistent with whatever our destiny is. And if it's something that is going to require us speaking, then we've got to take the time to be able to learn. You know, uh, I, I encourage people all the time. YouTube teaches you everything, teaches you how to speak, how to walk, how to dress, how to, you know, how to cook, whatever it is. And so anything that you're looking for to improve upon, you can find a class, you can find someone who's going to talk about that to help us. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, our destiny is always in identifying the the mentors in our lives that will help us to achieve whatever that goal is and so if it's requiring me to you know speak better to dress better to act better to look better you know then i've got to figure out who it is who can speak into my life uh to to help me with that i have a bff that you know she she knows fashion she's got that sense i don't have any of it and i learn from her because she you know she helps me to try to figure out how to do it i don't know a designer from a from a, a, a you know a target you know item i don't know any of those things but she helps me with stuff that i don't understand and so you have to have people in your life who are willing to walk alongside and not criticize you for not knowing what you're doing, but who will help you along the way. And he goes into this on um, page 168 at the bottom, identifying those four, er four areas. He says, first, forget about your status and recognition when you move into your new circle. So when we get to that mentor, to that new circle, we have to forget about the status that we had before and the recognition, realize we're on another ball game. And these people are going to be at another level above us and not to be intimidated by that. He goes on and says that um, then understanding that your needs aren't as attractive. This is on page 169. Your needs aren't as attractive to a busy person as their own. So finding out how I can have access by helping them fulfill their things in order for us to learn from that. Because automatically we think, okay, I come into you, I've asked you to be your my mentor, but now I want to learn from you, but I don't want to help you do anything at all. That's never going to work. What were your thoughts about that? And did you all agree with that or disagree with that? So let's go from there. 
I'm off mute. You're off mute. I I uh, I want to comment on the previous because um, my sister-in-law and I we always having a conversation about you know her thing is she doesn't raise her children she doesn't I don't I don't need to go to school no more I don't need to do this and she but she always complains she's lonely so uh, so I mean is that the end of her destiny or how does that work because. She's so adamant about she go to Sunday school and she go to church, but you know, and go out to eat. But she does, she's always lonely. Well, um, you know, being lonely and destiny are like two different things. There are, you know, knowing what God wants for you in your life, uh, understanding and connecting with that. Maybe she's at the point where she hasn't even connected to ask God, what's my next? And so maybe that's where she needs to start with, with what's my next, as opposed to focusing on the fact that she's lonely. But, you know, everyone has to be convinced in their own mind, in their own heart that they want more. And if they want more and they know that God is destining them to do more, then you're not going to be satisfied with just doing what you're doing. And maybe that's her destiny. Maybe that's what she wants to do. And she feels like, you know, that's where God wants me to be. Maybe she feels like when she goes out to dinner, you know, that, you know, she's meeting some people and having an impact with those waitresses. I don't know. That's something that each and every one of us have to come to a grips with, but we can't predict that for one another. Everybody has to hear from God for yourself. Uh, what is that old saying? You all, I'm sure you all heard it. Something about sitting on the bottom. Everybody's got to have their own bottom to sit on or something. Would you know what I'm talking about? What's that? What's that one? Unmute your mics and tell me what, how that goes, guys. I used to hear people say that. What was that? Everybody's got their own tub to sit on? Or something like that. Is that uh, it? Something like that. Everybody has to sit on, every tub has to sit on his own bottom or something like that. That's it. That's the one. Yeah, every tub has to sit on his own bottom. So you can't be worried about somebody else's destiny. That's between them and God. Amen. But good, good conversation. Good uh, input, Miss Erlene. Good. Uh, uh, we'll be praying for your sister, too, that uh, that God will get a hold of her heart and that she'll find her destiny in the midst of all of that. Uh, guys, so what do you all think? Further on, he goes on, says the second is the biblical principle of ask, seek, knock. The prudent advice of gaining higher level of access to knowledge. Um, what do you all think that is it because we don't ask people? We don't seek out people? We don't knock on the doors of people? Is that pride? Is that fear? What What is that, guys? Talk to me. It's both. Either or, or both. It can be pride. And it can't be fear. If you are introvert, you often have a fear of going up to people and relaying what you need or want. And sometimes you're too prideful. Oh, she thinks you're all there. I don't want to, I, I could do this myself. And you mess up every time, though, let me tell you. So, <laughs> but it could be either or. So, for me, it's mostly the introvertness. I, just like me. <laughs> okay. Anyone else before we move a little bit further from that biblical principle with the mentor? I, I, I'm an introvert person too. And uh, I have a lot of insecurities and I don't want to be rejected. And, uh, you know, I might ask, seek, and uh, knock to God. But as far as going to a person and say, uh, will you mentor me? Will you do this that, and the other? I, I, I guess that insecurity in me that doesn't want to be rejected comes in play. I'm, I'm, I need prayer for that. I understand. But, you know, the, the no would be a no anyway. If, if they were going to say no, they were going to say no anyway. It's not a rejection. It's just a no. And guess what? 
if that person doesn't mention you, you hear from God again, there's somebody out there who will do that. Uh, Sweet Rose says that pride, where we don't see our value. I think she agrees with you, she says. Uh, pride puts our view uh, of our ought above what God's view is of us. And I think that that's key. Uh, preach it, preach it, Sweet Rose, preach. Because one of the things that we realize is that when we put um, the fact that what a person is thinking above what God thinks of us, you know, we're giving that person too much power in our lives because quite frankly, God thinks of us as worthy and he would not have assigned us to what he's asking us to do if he knew we couldn't do it, you know? And so when somebody else says, oh, you can't do that, and then we go on and take that, we're saying your words, your worth is much more than my God's, you know? And so we have to learn that sometimes that rejection, because it does hurt, don't get me wrong, it does hurt to be rejected, but whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe their report? Or are you going to believe God's report? Are you going to believe what God has said about this? Or are you going to believe them who don't ha have the the uh, the universe at his at their setting? What they're saying is more important. And so sometimes we have to struggle with it, and then realize that our God is the one who trumps everything. More about that. Anybody want to talk more about that? And I understand, Mrs. Stella, you're not by yourself, but. Let, let me tell you, the good news is that they don't have a heaven or a hell to uh, to put you in your destiny. They don't have the insight to know what God has already told you. Anyone else? Miss Charlene trying to speak. Church, you know, this is the place where you're supposed to uh, exercise or, or you're supposed to get encouragement. And then, uh, you know, you see the same group doing everything and you looked over. So you have a tendency not to ask anymore or whatever. I don't know. I just know that it happens. You yeah. know, and, and I think that that is true, Miss Arlene, that we do feel overlooked sometimes because what we're trying to do is fit into a place that maybe God did not destine for us to be. Maybe he didn't want us to be around a certain group of people. Maybe he wanted us to be around a different group of people. But you know, we have preferences, don't we? Don't we all? I mean, we, we all do. Have, we all have our preferences of who we want to hang out with, who we want to know. Just like you all said, you all want to meet the Obamas. The <laughs> Obamas may not be the mentors. <laughs> your lives and, and i love them i love them i respect them honor them thank god for president obama thank god for michelle obama you know they will always be number one in my book but maybe they're not the ones who are going to speak into your life to fulfill the destiny that you've ordained and i think that sometimes we allow our preferences of who we want to mentor us to overtake the destiny that God has designed for us. And then we think, okay, uh, this person looks like the perfect person for that. But we haven't asked God a thing. We just like, you know, I just want to, I want to be around them. Like, mm -mm, Cause they may be full of all kinds of stuff that you, you know, <laughs> that will jump off of you ever been around somebody, you know, and they kind of have this, this aura, you, you don't want to be around everybody. <laughs> but no, I get it. I get it. We want to belong. We want to belong. But sometimes got to say, look, not that group. Not that group. <laughs> so what did you say, Miss Arlene? I'm sorry. I was talking while you were talking. I said, I just want to serve a lot of time. Am I, am I, am I on? Yes, ma'am, you are. I just want to serve, you know, and then you have to be a uh, hand picked or, or or not for this or not for that. Or then I don't know. It's just I've been discouraging a lot of times because, you know, this is like I said, it always was the same group. And then, well, I I will challenge you just as this book has challenged you 
is to figure out what is your destiny and then ask God, lead me to the group of people that will help me to fulfill that destiny. Because I promise you, not everybody can be in your circle, Miss Erlene. Some people are not going to be a blessing to you. Some people are not going to understand who you are. And I think that that's true for all of us. You know, there are some people in our lives that we are not to necessarily connect with. It doesn't mean that we're not supposed to have friendships and what have you with, but they're not the people that God has uh, ordained us or called us to. Uh, Miss Glenda? No, uh, Reverend Yvette, I just wanted to say, you said the perfect words. We don't ask God. So before we go into these things, you know, I, I probably don't. As a matter of, I'm almost sure I didn't, but uh, uh, you know, we don't we don't ask God, we don't talk to the Lord about it. You know, we just jump into it. It looked good to me, you know. They got something positive going on, so yeah, let me get with them. So you're right. We don't ask God. We should ask the Lord. Talk to the Lord first about these situations. Yeah, he's the one who's going to guide us, and he's the one that's going to give us direction. Thank you, Miss Glenda. I appreciate that. Yeah, and you always say, you know, I'm always singing, "Lead me, guide me." Yeah, am I yeah. following that? <laughs> Lead me, guide me until I want to go another way. <laughs> that should be the that should be the lyric. Lead me, guide me until I want to go another way. <laughs> that's good. That's good, Miss Glenda. Uh, he goes on by number three on page 171. He says, the third, know the value of on-the-job training. Admittedly, education can do much to prepare you for job performance, but it does little to equip you for the environment which your job must be performed. And then he gives a couple of examples, you know, regarding an astronaut. I can learn all of the things that I need to learn regarding, you know, um, you know, the training of, uh, of atmosphere and space, but it's very different walking out there. And I have such respect for them because I am not going to be caught up there doing none of that. That is not what God has called me to do. But I can read about it all day long, but it does not mean <laughs> that I'm going to go that way. Hey, Minister Elizabeth, glad to see you. Thank you for coming in and laughing with us. Uh, so he goes on and talks about that that's valuable for us to do it. So it's not just thinking about it and dreaming about it anymore is actually doing it. And that's what he's saying is that on the job training, once, once we get the knowledge, once we get the understanding, once God has given us the, uh, the green light, you know, to uh, fulfill that purpose. Now we got to start doing it because nothing will prepare us to do it until we do it. You know, it's like saying, um, I, I want to lose weight, um, but I'm never going to the gym. Never. Like never. I'm never even walking out the door. Never. You know, um, I, I don't change my eating habits at all. Never. I'm just, you know, I'm just doing, I'm doing me, you know. And, and so how often do we find ourselves behind doing whatever we're supposed to do because we just don't make any effort. Now, there are people who have wisdom on how to help us to get to another point, but we got to start, right? We got to start. He goes on and talks about taking the tour and he goes through a whole lot of information that those of you who, again, uh, for those of you who just joined us, we are reading Destiny, Step Into Your Purpose by T.D. Jakes. And we're on chapter 11. Uh, learn from the destiny of others. And as we're wrapping up, he goes on and says that, uh, oh, this is on page 174, he says that most of us can excel in one or two areas of life with little assistance. Mentors will help us to develop that 360 degree range of success. It doesn't mean that every area of your life will run smoothly at all times, most of us are dealing with some level of trouble or challenge. And I think that that's to what Miss um, Arlene was saying earlier. Uh, at any point in our lives, we all need someone we trust to serve as a check and balance 
to help us live the full life we desire. Mentors ask you hard questions. And I think that that's key. Uh, mentors will help you to ask those hard questions. He had talked about it, you know, that, you know, mentors doesn't, mentors don't necessarily mean that we're not, that they're going to be necessarily older than us. Sometimes they're going to be younger than us, uh, but they do ask us the hard questions. I have a younger mentor uh, in my life right now. I have a couple of younger mentors in my life. But one of one of the mentors, she asks me hard questions a lot, you know, and, and she does it in a very sweet way, you know, and she's very respectful. But she asks me very hard questions so that I can be better, you know, in the things that I do. And so sometimes we've got to break out and say that I can only excel by myself in these areas, but I need mentors to help me to take it a little further. What are your thoughts, guys? And those of you on Facebook, feel free to jump in with your comments. I agree. We need a mentor in every area of our lives to help us along the way. So, and because we're going to have hard areas. Mm -hmm. We're going to have need someone to help to encourage us to get through it or to tell us that we've done it wrong or whatever the case may be. But we have to be open also to accept their heart. Even if they do it in a nice way, you know, it's a hard criticism at that moment. So we have to be open enough to accept it and receive that from God as that's what we need to do and turn a different way. Mm -hmm. So as we pray and seek his guidance, he's given it to us. Through that mentor, you know, they're speaking to us, telling us we have to trust it. That's that's what it is. And stop trying to say, well, no, God, she said that, but I need to hear it from. It's not the way it works, <laughs> but we often do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Miss Blinda, Miss Erling, uh, anything you all want to share? I think we do our... Uh mentors uh mentees uh, this service when because sometimes you know they expect it to be like this move and everything but i had to learn that my job was uh anything deemed necessary some days even though i was a nurse and if i have to sweep the floor i had to do that too mm -hmm. or i had to make a bed so but everybody everybody is not trained that way and they get frustrated with it because they, you know, I went to school to be a nurse. I didn't go to school to do this. And that's why it takes mentors like you to help people along the way. Miss Vivian says you can learn from anyone and they don't have to be older. Amen, Miss Vivian. But we learn so much from you all the time, too, with your young self. You go, girl. So as we go on a little bit further, we realize that there are some things that we cannot change in our lives. We realize that there's some things that just cannot be afforded. But what he goes on and says here, and this is on page 177, if you guys, and, and I feel free to jump back if you uh, if I miss a section that you were interested in. He goes on in page 177 and he says, mentoring may be the booster shot you need if you feel your life is lagging in certain critical areas. A strong relationship will cause you to redeem the time you may have lost trying to uh, find your own way. A mentor can make the difference between success and failure. In church, we refer to the relationship dynamic as discipleship. And then he goes on to the root word of discipleship means to uh, discipline. Without it, most people never achieve their goals because destiny requires us to have the capacity for control. As you develop the ability to regulate yourself, you will wisely use time order always increases productivity uh yes it's it difficult to discipline yourself hence the accountability of the mentors 
Uh, Miss Vivian, uh, Miss Rose gives you credit. She says she's definitely learned from you, and I know that I have for sure. Oh, I'm sorry that your tablet went out, Mrs. Stella. We miss you on here, but we'll still hear from you until we wrap this up. And we're almost wrapping up now, anyway. Did you all want to go on and share something else before we go to that last page? Anything that I might have missed out for you guys? Not anything you miss, but I just want to say that we can't disciple ourselves because we can't be a mentor to ourselves. Because if I want to go right and I don't have nobody to tell me that that right road is the wrong road, I'm going to go right and I'm going to fall into that hole or that ditch that's ahead. But if I have that mentor walking with me, they're going to say the right is not the way to go. Today. You need to go left. You need to, you know, so. We, we should never try to uh, mentor ourselves or do it on our own. Seek, seek that community. I, I'm learning more and more every day. We got to have that community around us and focus on us to, to as you focus on them, you, it's amazing me oftentimes how much we feed into our mentors. We think that they mentor in us while they learn it from us. They'll come back and say, you know, you did. And the way you did, I'm like, okay, so it's a two-way street. It is a two-way street. That's so good. He goes on on page 178, and this is the last thing I want to share, but I want to open it back up to you guys. He says, a young mentor can energize and remind you of what you still have to offer. I think that's the key. I'm going to read it again. A younger mentor may energize and remind you of what you still have to offer. An older mentor can serve as living proof that what you desire can happen for you too. Yes, there is someone willing to mentor you no matter what your age. And I believe that that is true. And I believe that's why we have to ask the Holy Spirit and not ourselves or not what we see or not what we imagine. We need to ask the Holy Spirit, who is it that you want me to approach rather than what I want for me? So in case you all never meet the Obamas in person, <laughs> who is it <laughs> that God is going to mentor, you know, asking God to mentor you, you know, what if you never meet uh, uh, Bill Gates from Microsoft? You know, uh, who is that, you know, that I get a chance to connect with? Who is it? If I don't get a chance to meet T.D. Jakes, you know, the author of this book, you know, who else is it that you have given that gifting that is specifically to help me? Anyone else want to go on and jump in before we close up for today? You know, um. Uh... Reverend Eva, I didn't think I had any mentors I, until, you know, discussing this. I, I think, um, you know, I call um, uh, this lady, I call her my surrogate mother. She lives in Georgia. But I think she's a mentor to me, you know, yeah. after this discussion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think about some of the things she said to me. You know, I listen. You know, what she tell me to do, I, you know, I do it and I listen to her advice. But I just never thought of her as a mentor. And I guess she is a mentor. She is a mentor. You just said it. She tells you good advice. You do it. It changes your life. That's awesome. Mrs. Yes, Stella, she thank, th th thank you, Mrs. Stell. Thank you for sharing the book, sharing with us today as we're sharing the book with you. Uh, do we have anything else while we're closing up today? Because that we are at our time. Anyone? I just want to say it. The one about the young younger people, don't be yeah. afraid of people age. Yes. If God tell you that that person is the person that needs to walk with you alongside you as you walk alongside them, go for them. I have some as young as in their 20s. Yeah. And I'm learning from them as they watch me. And like I said, I realize how much I'm showing them, even though I use them for a mentor because of where they are. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. And those of you on Facebook and those of you who will view later on YouTube, we are so grateful that you joined us. 
for Serenity Book Club. We're Salem Baptist Church of Chicago Serenity Book Club. We've been together for about six years reading and discussing great books, and we are glad that you joined us. Thank you, Miss Arlene. Thank you, Miss Glenda. Thank you, Ms. Estella, for having joined us. Thank you, Ms. Carolyn. And thank you guys for spending your time to talk about this wonderful book. Have a wonderful day. Everybody say goodbye. <laughs>